Yo, this is Tosin from Animals as Leaders, and you're watching Fret12.com. TM100 was born from a, a custom shop guitar I had built for me that um, came out really cool and I guess there was a lot of, they were getting a lot of interest from distributors who I guess were hearing from potential consumers interested in this guitar and so I guess that coupled with the Animals as Leaders kind of you know doing our thing, they were like hey let's move forward with a signature guitar. They wanted to release basically a clone of that custom guitar that I did. But I wanted to take that as a starting point and make something a bit more interesting, because like, why not? So um, the first thing to change was probably the finish. I wanted to do a transparent white, because this guitar was just white. Um, tortoiseshell pick art with a white finish. Um, I decided to go with a trans white, which ended up being a trans gray, like this bluish, like this light blue grayish color that's matte, which I think is really unique and I haven't seen on an Ibanez let alone many other guitars in general. So that was kind of a happy accident. Uh, the back and sides I left natural, just because I really like the natural wood grain. Um, I think it's beautiful, so. Um, the other difference was the tone wood. Like, the, um, that guitar was ash. I decided to go with basswood, because under further scrutiny, I kind of prefer basswood to ash. Um, I think it's a great neutral wood. So. Uh, but I did want to make this guitar distinctly different than the rest of the Ibanez catalog, so I used Wenge in the neck, because I had an Ibanez prestige bass at home that had a Wenge neck, and um, we were tracking stuff with it, and just upon like paying attention, I found that the, the Wenge had a really snappy, pronounced mid-range, and a unique character. I like the porous feel, so we went for a, an unfinished Wenge neck with Babinga reinforcement strips, so it gives it a great, a great actual tactile feel and the tone is kind of unique as well. Um, from there, I wanted to just do more aesthetic differences like uh, trapezoidal inlays, mother of pearl, um, gold hardware, which was like a thing that I was spot on for a while because most guitar players, I guess, despise gold hardware or something. But It's usually nickel, you don't see it too often. Yeah, or black, which is cool, but you have a lot of options with that uh, hardware color, and I, I wanted to do something for people who weren't getting the options that they that they wanted to see. So the gold hardware, I think it looks great. And the ionizers were the final step, which is voicing a pickup that was specific to what I needed. So tonal versatility, um, you know, a more moderate output so that you can actually hear the wood of the guitar and it's more, art you know, the articulation of your picking is transferred because you're not like, you know, brick walling the pickup. It's got headroom to breathe. And so the ionizers totally they totally nail that sound I was going for. So all that combined is the TM100. Actually, in the studio for this last album, we tone matched this head and this cab, like I said. So um, we really wanted to retain the, the studio sound. So we're running those same patches virtually. Maybe we're trimming off some of the high end, but we're running those same patches to front of house direct. And then, um, yeah, amplifying it through the actual heads. I practice more at home, and at home it's practice that is just representative of where I'm trying to go as a player. On tour, I practice things that I need to execute on stage. So if there's like problem parts that I keep messing up or like, um, you know, there's chops, like first album material, second album material, there's a ton of economy picking and a ton of, and it's like my style's actually changed since then. Like if I'm just chilling at home, I'm not gonna be like sweet picking all over the place, but on tour I have to play the older material. So I do a lot of metronome based stuff and just really kind of keep my chops up. Um, so it's kind of just a crapshoot. I usually just try to warm up on the stuff I need to execute on stage. Our writing process is always the same. It's like uh, guitar-based ideas. I'll have a few riffs and then we track them in to whatever recording program we're using. And we 
program drums, and then that's a working demo or pre-production version of the song, and we refine it from there. Uh, first album I did with Misha Mansoor, he and I basically did the whole album. Um, he did all the drum programming, all the synth stuff. He helped me uh, sequence the songs. He even wrote certain parts. The second album we did with Naveen, um, so we did it as a band. And then the third album, we went back to working with Misha for about seven songs as a producer. And then we worked with Diego, who plays in volumes. He did about three songs. Javier wrote a few. And then, you know, it's the first album where we recorded acoustic drums. Um, we worked with Nolly from Periphery. He produced um, he, all the guitar tracking as well as the drums sessions and the mix. So, and then Naveen did all the electronic production. So it's actually the most collaborative as far as inclusive of people, this third album is the most like collaborative out of all of them. So. I wanted Animals as Leaders to be like my like favorite band that didn't exist. So it was a a product that was meant to combine all of my influences because most people who listen to Mashuga aren't necessarily listening to Radiohead, right? Or they're not listening to Bebop. So. It wasn't really like, it was just like, this is what comes, it's like a diet of music. This is what I listen to, so when I go to write music, it includes all of my influences, whether I want it to or not. I didn't want it to be a limited genre specific thing. I wanted it to be like inclusive of all the you know beautiful parts of music that I like. So harmonically, it's borrowing from jazz, but I like the aggression of metal. I like the rhythmic vocabulary of like progressive metal, Meshuggans in particular. Um, just, you know, the electronic elements of, you know, Aphex Twin and Square Pusher and all that stuff is really stimulating to me, so. I would say, like, Tom York, Bjork, Frederick Dornall, Alan Holdsworth, Kurt Rosenwinkel, and Square Pusher. I send wireless to the line six, which then inputs into the fractal in the back. Um, we send a direct signal to front of house, which is actually a tone matched version of this Port City Pearl and uh, this Port City cab with vintage 30s in it. So we, we did the whole tone match thing, came up with a tone that we like, and it basically sounds exactly like the head. We send that to front of house um, just for consistency's sake. There's a bit of dynamic difference too because we're literally playing through the PA as opposed to miking a cab and stuff like that. Then on stage, um, we output of the fractal um, into the Port City head. So we go straight into the, the face of it and we actually use the EQ on the head. Um, this stuff is all hand wired point to point, super clean tube circuitry um, and it's almost like a glorified power amp. It does have EQ and it does have that preamp circuitry, but it just imparts a bit more character. So on stage, we use this to, to amplify this cab just for stage monitoring, stage volume. We prefer it to the full range stuff. Um, and then uh, I'm actually sending my signal out of the fractal into my boomerang. This allows me to record myself layer parts, loop parts, um, comes out of the boomerang into this matrix solid state power amplifier. And that sends the loop signal to here. So this vertical cab is just for my playback of the loops. It's a dedicated cab. So that way we don't have the issue with sound on sound, the loop and the playing trying to come through in the same speaker, it gets a bit muddy. So this also gives our front of house independent control over my loops because it's on its own channel. So he can blend if the loop's too loud or not loud enough or whatever. So, um, yeah, and then I use this MFC 101. It's a dedicated MIDI controller for the fractal. Um, this just allows me to change patches. Going direct, you usually sacrifice that stage volume and that realism with a resonating, you know, cabinet. But um, we found a way to kind of get the consistency and directness of that sort of straight to front of house sound 
and then on stage we get the experience of actually having amps. So it's it's one of the joys of using the Axe Effects, I guess. This is the first time we're doing it like this. We've done everything from going fully, you know, like using a two power amp with the Axe Effects and miking a cabinet, like a traditional sort of preamp power amp setup. And then we've done things where we've gone fully direct, where there's no traditional cabs or amps on stage. It's, you know, full range speakers, like uh, powered Mackie wedges and stuff like that. We found that that works, but at the end of the day, um, if we could get away with having both, you know, like a real, a real amp on stage and a direct sound to front of house, that's kind of like no compromise. So in the US, we definitely can do this. Um, like I said, it's the first tour we've done it this way. We'll see about doing it abroad, but um, yeah, it's, it's just sweet because you're not, you're not sacrificing any feel, but then you're getting some of the benefits of playing direct, which there's quite a few. Uh, our tech, Nick, is actually restringing one of my TM 100s. Um, I'll grab one that has strings on it. This is my signature Ibanez guitar. Um, it's this transparent gray finish, which is really cool. Um, it's matte. It's kind of got a satin sort of sheen to it. Um, quilted maple top, and it's you know about a quarter inch thick, so it's not a veneer. It's like a real top. Basswood body, um, just because I like basswood. I think it's a really totally neutral wood. Um, Wenge neck with Babingo reinforcement strips. Um, these sort of perloid uh, block inlays. I have my ionizer sets here, so this is a pretty cool pickup configuration. Um, the ionizers are not your traditional high output like eight string pickup. They're, they're closer to something you'd hear in like a I don't know more. I don't know something. I was going for like Telecaster type tones honestly. I found in the lower register, a, a lower output pickup with a bit of that sort of single coil articulation has a lot of growl to it. I do a lot of slap technique and that single coil voicing really complements that too. As well, well as the tapping, it like, it's very articulate and a lot of the highs jump out. And it's got a lot of, it's like spanky, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's how we voice these pickups. Um, right here I have a mini toggle that splits the humbucker into a single coil. You go into this uh, second position here, you actually engage this single coil pickup and this inner coil. So you get these two rails. It's kind of like a, kind of like a beefed up, uh, out of phase sort of sound. Pickup selector in the middle, you have these two humbuckers on. If you engage the mini toggle at this point, you have these two innermost coils. And then if you go to this uh, fourth setting here, you have this single coil and this inner coil. I believe it could be that one, I'm not sure. But um, that gives you that, it really almost sounds like a lipstick pickup or like a, like a Telecaster, like a, a beefier single coil sort of sound, which is super cool. And then here is just the humbucker. You split this, then you have just that uh, outer coil. Premium version of uh, my TM100. So that's Fuji Gen, you know, the prestige factory. They do all the signature stuff. This is a... Uh, I think in Korea or Indonesia they have a, a factory where they're making the premium stuff, which is cool because it sits, sits in between you know the prestige and the the, um, the entry level stuff. But honestly, I played this guitar for the whole show yesterday, and it's sick. <laughs> so you're not really you know for the price point, you're getting an amazing guitar in my opinion. It has the same routing options, um, so it has an ionizer set that comes with it. You can do the whole, you know, single coil, outer coil thing, whatever you want to do. Um, has a Gibraltar fixed bridge. I actually really like this bridge. The profile's a lot lower. Um, you don't have to deal with a lot of the, um, if you're not into, if you don't need the Floyd, you know, that amount of mass, as well as the locking tuners, this thing does just fine. And it actually feels really good. I think the tension's a little bit lower because of the string break. Mm -hmm. So it has a slightly different feel to it. Um, when get, I'm sorry, it has a maple neck basswood body um so it sounds quite similar to my tm100 but obviously the tone woods are different this one's a little brighter i think because of the maple mm -hmm. but um it's pretty rad I'm, I'm very happy with it so i'm gonna be playing this on stage too